here's two little Lux clocks that I bought off of uh, Marketplace. I only paid $15 to include shipping for both clocks. And here it says Lux. You could tell a Lux clock because they wind up at the 6 o'clock position. This is also a Lux that I'll be using for parts. But uh, if it was a Keebler, it would wind up at the 9 o'clock position. So I'm going to take these apart and clean them up. Um, the pendulum is all bent inside there uh, it does wind up um, but it needs cleaned as the pendulum does not continue to tick and the fact that it's bent up it will uh, stop it from ticking uh, hopefully I could take the bird off the bird is supposed to just slide in on that post uh, replacement birds um, they don't slide that well on that post and uh, one clock that I repaired I end up gluing it to that post so uh, there's two nuts on these things uh, you pry the minute hand off and that is a trick in itself. And I'm going to try to pry the bird off of that post and take this thing apart. So, uh, stand by. There with a pair of pliers, I was able to pull the mini hand off. And so I got lucky there. And so I'm going to try to get lucky with, with taking the bird off. Hopefully I don't damage it. I was able to get that off also. As you can see, it has uh, bent over metal tabs that slide in on that post. There's a good picture of it but with the new ones that you order from time savers those tabs are not bent that well I had to modify mine and it still didn't stay on that post and that's why I end up gluing it so now I'm going to uh, undo the nuts In the hour hand should slide up through the the hole. And as you can see the clock is extremely the movement is extremely dirty and that's why it doesn't stay running. Because of all this hair and dirt and dust. But there's a... Uh, Typically, screws that hold this move, this housing in place, and that's what I'm looking for. Uh, 
I found it is just this dirty. It's right here and right here. And trying to see over the top of the camera so y'all can see what's going on is a challenge. And then, like I said, well, in that case, the hour hand came off because um, uh, it came off the arbor. The uh, there we go. It's still on the arbor. It's compression fit on the arbor. And I wouldn't recommend taking it off. Just clean it up. Because if you do take it off, uh, you might destroy it. And so I would just uh, leave it on. There's a, there's a, a ring. or It's bent over right here. And that's why I, I would just leave it on. But uh, I need to take this movement apart. And uh, before you take the movement apart, you got to let down the power. And if you watch another video of mine, I used a zip tie to go around the uh, to go around the spring. So I need to go get a zip tie. Here we have a zip tie. I typically use wire. But when you have a spring this small, a zip tie works better. Except for there's something wrong with my zip tie here. I fixed the zip tie. And so uh, you want to make sure that the, uh, the zip tie is just around the spring itself not around anything else and these springs are fairly weak um, as far as uh, any damage that could occur so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, take these posts off and take the nuts off and uh, Typically, you'd lick down the click, uh, but the click is hard to get to on these. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, here's the teeth and the clicks on the opposite side over here. But anyway, uh, because I have the uh, zip tie nice and tight, uh, it shouldn't release any more on the uh, on the spring, and I should be able to take these nuts off and take the plates off. And of course, you want to take pictures all the way around. Uh, I didn't do that. I have a, another one that I can view. Um, see there, the uh, spring went down in the zip tie more. Uh, 
I'm hoping the zip tie is gonna hold. And there we have it. So, uh, Now I could take and put this, these parts and clean them up, put them in my ultrasonic cleaner, clean it up, then take toothpicks to the pivot holes. As you heard me say this several times in my other videos, the ultrasonic cleaner is like a dishwasher and it will not at least I have found it will not get into the nooks and crevices and so you need to uh, take toothpicks to the pivot holes and uh, make sure they're nice and clean you could do it prior or do it after uh, as long as you do it if it's too dirty, you'd want to clean it up prior to put it into your ultrasonic cleaner. Um, that way you save the solution. So we'll get back after I get this out of the ultrasonic cleaner and put it all back together. While the movement is being cleaned, I'm going to clean the case with some old English oil. This is a composite, and I will leave a uh, link in the description below on Dan and Diane's uh, Lux page. And they have a, one of the best pages out there when it comes to Lux clocks. And uh, they'll tell you what this material is made out of. I think uh, Old English Oil will clean it up just fine. Using a brush to get into the uh, hard to reach spots to clean them off. Uh, I use Old English oil on a lot of products. I have uh, New Life Furniture Mask and Howard Beating Wax, but uh, it's more expensive than Old English oil, and I don't think it would uh, do uh, any better job on this particular uh, housing. Uh, than the old English oil would do uh, only because the old English oil gets into the hard to reach spots and then taking a rag afterwards and wiping off the old English oil But I think that looks uh, pretty good, don't you? I'm going to do the same thing to the metal housing. I'm just going to wipe off all the dust and dirt and grime using that rag that has the old English oil on it. Um, Just to, like I said, get all the, the dirt 
and dry them out. Cleaning up the bird. Again, it just got years of dirt on it. Uh, soap and water would do the trick. We'll come back after the movement is out of the cleaner. I did want to show you the click. Here's the click. You need to inspect that to make sure it's working properly, which it is. Now you can clean the spring by putting this next main gear in putting a couple nuts on putting a screwdriver down here or a pen or a nail or something that way it holds that gear from spinning tighten it up cut the zip tie then release the screwdriver which will allow that gear to spin and like I said the, these springs are not dangerous and so you can release them in your hand I would suggest wearing a glove and then clean the spring and then put this back on Along with that gear, putting the screwdriver down and tighten it up until you get the spring tight enough that you can put a zip tie on. Now I'm putting the movement back together. It is very important when you put this all back together, there's a pin that goes down the top of the movement. That goes to the left of the spring. That way the spring doesn't go toward the gears. And it comes out of the case. You can also clean the spring this way. If you chose to do so. But make sure that that, that pin is to the left of the spring. Um, and then the movement will easily pop into place. Uh, I need to... Uh, Put the pendulum on as the last step I need to do. And that is the part that can be a little tricky. Um, a, this is the post that the bird sits on. So you want it to go out the front.
Now I need to tighten up all the nuts and give it a little wind and see if it's uh, uh, working properly. And then I need to oil it. And if you subscribe to my other, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will find videos of me oiling a movement. I'm not going to show people everything in these channels because they'll watch what they want to see and won't subscribe to my YouTube channel. But as you can see, it's sticking away uh, without me giving it a wind. So now I need to oil it and put it back in the case. But there you see it sticking away. Um, they are tricky to adjust. Uh, you don't want to be tilting the thing upside down or whatever to make it tick. Or tilting it to the left or right. I like my stuff being straight up and down. Uh, they are tricky to adjust. And so... Uh, Anyway, uh, time to put this back in the case. When you put it back in the case, you got to put the pendulum rod down in there and uh, line up the screw holes. And you don't want the pendulum rod to be touching the case like this one is. So I have to take it back out and bend it so it's not touching the back or the front of the case. Here I have it so it's not touching the front or the back of the case, so friction will not stop it. This clock is ready to be hung on the wall. I hope y'all like this video. Um, please hit the subscribe button and God bless. And by the way, I did take the uh, movement out of the other clock, uh, this clock right here. This was the case. Here's the movement. It's nice and rusty. Uh, the spring is rusty. It's going to need cleaned up. If nothing else, a friend of mine gave me a Lux clock that uh, it has one bent arbor, a uh, broken um, uh, pivot on one of the uh, gears. I could always use this as a parts clock. Again, I hope y'all like this video. Please hit the subscribe button. And God bless.